Alright, so in this trig summary video, we're just going to be looking at trigonometric identities and doing one example. So we'll list the identities and do one example of proving left-hand side equals right-hand side. Okay, I know some of you feel violated when we see trigonometric identities because that's often a place where people lose lots of marks. And the reason is not difficulty. The reason is usually it's so many lines of computation and calculation that it's easy to make a small mistake somewhere. That's usually the biggest problem. Okay, but let's get into it. So just writing down our basic functions. We've got sine of theta. We've got cosine of theta. And we've got the tangent or tan of theta. Those are our basic trig functions. But we also have their reciprocals, which is important to know because we will use them in the, trigon in the identities. Okay, so if we do the reciprocal of sine, that just means 1 over sine, we get the cosec, the cosecant of theta. If we do the inverse, not inverse really, but the reciprocal of cos or cosine, we get the second or sec theta. And for tan, the reciprocal of tan theta is the cotangent, or cot theta. Right, so those are basic trig functions, all six of them. Now let's write down our four identities that we should know. The first one is tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta. Sine theta over cos theta. Just bear with me with all the coloring. I think it helps with uh, retaining memory if we see all the different colors. So I'm just going to keep doing that until we finish that. But once we're solving the equation, I'll just be using one color. Yeah, the second identity that we need to know is sine squared of theta plus cos squared of theta plus cos squared of theta equals 1. And then the third one, we know that tan squared of theta plus 1 equals sec squared of theta, sec squared of theta. And the final one is that cot squared or the cotangent squared of theta plus one equals cosec squared of theta, cosec squared of theta. Right, so these are the four identities that we should know. And the most important, in my opinion, and I'll explain why in a short while, are these two on the left. You can get away with knowing only these two. That's fine. These two might help you solve some of the identities quicker, but you don't need to know them. In school, I only used to, to make use of these two because I changed all my identities into sine and cosine to start off with and then solve from there. But like I said, some of them will be slightly quicker if you can spot these identities. Right, let's do our one example and that'll be the end of the video. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to solve this or prove that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So I'm just going to start on the left-hand side and I'm going to turn everything, like I said, into sine and cosine. So cosec is the same as 1 over sine, 1 over sine x. Minus and then cot x, that's the same as cos x over sine x. And how do we know that? Well, because it's the inverse, or not the inverse, in some ways, it is the reciprocal of tan. Tan was sine over cos, so cot is the, is the reciprocal, so that's cos over sin. All right, so we're just working with the left-hand side for now. So if we have this, we can say, now we can find a common denominator, and luckily for us, it already has one, sine x. All right, at the top, then we just have one minus cos x. This is still all squared. Now we can square the bracket, so 1 minus cos x times 1 minus cos x. I'm just going to keep that for now. So 1 minus cos x times 1 minus cos x at the top. Oops. Cos, yeah, let me just do the s again. Cos x. At the bottom, we've got sine x times sine x. So that's sine squared x. All right. So we're getting there. We still already have 1 minus cos x at the top, which is what we want in the end. But there's another 1 minus cos x. So what can we do now? Now this is where our second identity here at the bottom comes in. We know that sine squared plus cos squared is 1. So we can rearrange this formula. If we get sine squared by itself, then we have sine squared equals 1 minus cos squared if we take the cos squared over. Okay, so let's use that. The top we can keep as it is. 1 minus cos x times 1 minus cos x. At the bottom, 
we'll change this into 1 minus cos squared x, right? Because that's our identity. And then again, the top we can keep as it is 1 minus cos x times 1 minus cos x. Oops, the handwriting is degrading at an alarming pace. So my apologies. Now this, what is interesting here, is this is a difference between two squares. So this is where factorizing comes back into the mix. So this is why keeping up to date with whatever you've done in the previous years does help a lot. And the difference between two squares, we know we get two brackets. One gets a plus, one gets a minus. And then the square root of the first term is the first term in each bracket. And the square root of the second term is the second term in each bracket. So cos x, cos x. All right, so now we're pretty much done. We can see we've got one term over one term, so we can cancel things out. And we can say, let's do those two. They cancel out, and we're left with 1 minus cos x over 1 plus cos x. And is that what we want? Let's just scroll up a little bit. Yes, that's exactly equal. So then we can just say left-hand side equals or is identical to right-hand side and we are done. So this is the idea with identities. I would suggest convert everything you have into sine and cosine and solve from there just applying these identities. Like If you see one of these two somewhere in the mix you're welcome to convert them that might make your life a little bit quicker but you can get away with just converting everything into sine and cos and solving from there and I would recommend doing that. Alright so that is the basic idea of identities. In the comments if you have any questions or maybe some identities that you've been struggling with, let me know. Maybe we can do another video on a couple more examples.